love, did you enjoy our wedding? Oh, what a beautiful wedding that was. I'm so honored to be your wife, Orpheus. And I'm honored to be your husband, my sweet Eurydice. I think my favorite part of the wedding was when you played your beautiful lyre. Will you please play it again? I long to hear these magical tunes one more time. Of course, my beloved wife, I'll play for you anytime. Oh, that would be wonderful. You play the same song you did at our wedding, and I will dance. As Eurydice dances to the tune of her husband's music, she does not notice a snake slithering out of the bushes and accidentally steps on it. Now, Eurydice, you didn't see me here and you stepped on me. That really hurt. No one ever sees me. It was an accident. Eurydice did not mean to step on you. Please do not bite me, for it was an accident, and I do not want to die and be torn from my dear little Orpheus. Please spare me. <laughs> you got what you deserved. Now you will spend the rest of your days in the underworld, far away from your love, Orpheus. Oh no, my poor Eurydice, how will I ever live without my beautiful wife? I will reunite with you one day, my love. Do not worry. Good luck trying to get Eurydice back. It will never work unless you two are dead and sent back to the underworld. I must devise a plan to get my one true love back. Orpheus starts off on the long journey to the entrance of the underworld to get back his wife Eurydice. But he is stopped by the boatman Chiron, who does not let him cross. Hello, Chiron, mighty boatman of the river Styx. I would like to cross this river, please. No, you may not cross unless you are dead and you have a gold coin. And you are neither dead nor do you have a gold coin for me. Here, will this coin work? No, you must be dead in order to cross into the underworld, Orpheus. I cannot let you cross. Why can't you take me across just this one time? I beg you. No, Hades will not approve of that. I am this close, this close to getting a rig. And if I let you pass, I will never get it. You are not worth the risk. But I'm going after my one true love, Eurydice. She has been sent to the underworld and I must get her back. Will you make an exception? Are you deaf? Didn't I say Hades will not approve, allow that? He will kill you. Fine, at least let me play a tune for my beautiful liar. Oh wow, that music is quite lovely. You have convinced me to take you across the river, but you will never get past the mighty Cerberus, the three-headed dog. Oh great, a living human. I need to cross, will you let me? You shall not pass, our boss Hades will not allow that. Hmm, I'm thinking, no, under no circumstances can you pass. Unfortunately, you cannot pass because we will lose our job. I'm sorry, Orpheus. Please, I've come so far. I need to get my one true love. I don't care about your true love. Mwah, mwah, true love. The answer is no. Get out of here, human. Maybe we can let him cross to get to his true love. No, we will lose our job. It's not worth the risk. He will have to survive without his true love. Come on, have a heart. He just wants to be with Eurydice. And if you ask me, that snake was a little harsh to bite her in the first place. She didn't see him after all. You are too soft. Sometimes I wonder if you are worthy of being ahead of Cerberus. Tough enough! I understand. I'll just sit here and play my lyre then. Well now, that is lovely. As Orpheus' journey continues, he makes it past the three-headed Cerberus, and now he must convince Hades and Persephone. Let's see what is to come next. Lady Persephone, King Hades, it is I, Orpheus, here from the living world. I am here for my queen Eurydice. What are you doing down here? You don't belong here. Are you a living soul? Yes, I am. And I am here for my beloved Eurydice. I have gotten through your boatman Chiron and that terrifying three-headed Cerberus. I tricked them both. You got through Chiron? If he thinks he's getting a raise now, he can forget it. It's so hard to find good help here in the end of the world. You should not be here. 
He has never let a living soul into the underworld, besides me, of course. Perhaps we can make an exception. No! I understand. I'll just sit here and play my lyre instead. After a lot of bickering, Orpheus decides to play his lyre in hopes that it will convince Hades and Persephone like it did the others. Orpheus's music was so lovely that for just a moment it is said that the punishments of Hades stopped. Sisyphus stopped pushing the boulder up the mountain, the Danaides stopped filling their vases, and the Ixion's wheel stopped spinning. For just a moment, there's peace, even in the underworld. Persephone was particularly touched by the music and begged Hades to release Eurydice. <laughs> Enough! My queen is so moved, I will let you take your bride back under one condition. Oh yes, thank you, Hades! Don't thank us yet. I want you to have Eurydice, but if you look back at her while she is following you out of the underworld, she will stay down here forever. Do, Do not turn around. around! Oh, thank you, thank you! I'm getting my true love back. I will not look back, and I am sure of it. Oh, and Eurydice, you may not talk until you leave the underworld. Are we clear? I understand. Thank you, Hades and Persephone. If she utters a word, she will be sent right back to the underworld. And the journey began as Eurydice follows Orpheus back to the living world. Will Orpheus be able to keep his word and not look back at her? Only time will tell. Wait, what if Hades and Persephone are tricking me? I never trusted them, but I long to have my beautiful Eurydice back in my life. Eurydice, are you there? Oh, I love you so much, and I want to have you with me. But I can't look back, or so they say. As Orpheus looks back to see if Eurydice is following, he sees her for a brief moment before she disappears. She has been sent back to the underworld and will remain there forever. We must see what Orpheus will do. Now how will I ever be able to see my wife again? I must think of a way to get back to the underworld. I'd be alone with her. Oh, I know. I'll have that snake bite me as it did my love and then I can be with her again. It's you again. Yes, it's me. May I ask you to do something for me? And what might that be? I finally found my Eurydice, but I had a moment of weakness, and I looked at her when I was not supposed to, and now Hades had sent her back to the underworld. If you bite me, and I die, I can be with her once again. You want me to bite you? That's not something you hear every day. <sighs> At last, I will be reunited with my love soon enough. My son Heimdall, I give you the sun to eat, the ocean to drink, and the sea. Thank you, mothers. I am honored to accept these gifts, which will give me strength. I am so lucky to have my mother. I can't believe that you are fully grown after only one year. It seems like just yesterday you were a small baby. Isn't that strange? Where is my father Odin? I must speak with him at once. Of course, I will call the old and mighty Odin. Hey now, my son. I am worried about the Rainbow Bifrost Bridge and it being destroyed by the Frost Giants. I need someone strong and powerful to help guard and protect it. Oh, Father, may I volunteer? I am a man now with strength from the sun and ocean. I can protect our bridge. Mothers, tell father I'm ready. You are quite strong indeed, but it is up to your father to make that decision. Yes, you are fully grown and your meals have made you stronger, but the strength will not be enough to keep the frost drive away. If strength is not enough, what more do I need? Here, take this Dyler horn and sword. Blow the horn when there is danger, and it will call all the creatures of earth and heaven. This sword will help you fight off the frost giants. Thank you, Father. I will bring the sword and the horn with me on my journey. 
I am also giving you the power of getting a full night's rest in only a few seconds, so that you are always well rested and ready for whatever may come. Thank you, Father. And how will I get to the bridge? Just as I have my horse slip near, I will give you this mighty steed, Kota. He will take you there very quickly. Oh, Father, will this be a great eight-legged horse like yours? No, son, definitely not. You are not powerful enough yet to handle a steed like mine. For you, son, I will give you Goltop, whose name is Golden. I'm lucky to have a horse like Goltop. Thank you. I'm very proud of you, son. I believe in your abilities to protect the bridge. I can ride across the bridge in the blink of an eye so you can make it there faster. Together, you and I will help protect the Asgard Bridge. We shall go! I hear someone attacking the bridge. Let's go! It's the Frost Giants. You should blow your horn to scare them away. Good idea. I'm going to take a quick rest. I'm exhausted. That was so fast. How did you do that? Odin gave me the power of being a full night's sleep in just a moment of rest. That's the most wonderful power anyone could ever ask for. Goldtop, are you hungry? Take these oats and this apple. Thank you, Heimdall. You treat me so well. These oats and this apple are delicious. Do you hear that? I hear something, but my ears are not as powerful as yours. What is it that you hear? It's the frost giants again. Come, Goldtop, we must go and protect the bridge. With you on my back, I will get us there in no time. So, Odin has created a boy frost bridge, huh? Well, we are the frost giants, brave and powerful, so this must be our brain. Indeed, brother, let's take it. Who is that coming forth? Oh, no! It is the mighty Heimdall coming with his horse. He has his sword. We are no match for him. You were right. We will come back another time, a time when he is not on guard. It looks as if the frost giant saw us coming and got scared. But wait, I hear something else. Let's continue our patrol. We must ride in the direction of the noise and see what it is. I hear a suspicious insect. I think it is a fly. It must be a god in disguise. But the only one who can disguise himself like that is Loki, so it must be him. I am Loki the Sly God. We'll fly into Freya's room and steal her precious necklace. Aha, I have finally gotten my hands on her necklace. Now I must make my great escape. I will be in my true god form, and I will wear the necklace. Look, I think I just saw an insect fly into Freya's room. Let us go and see what that mischievous Loki is up to. Yes, let us go find out what he plans to do. Oh, my beautiful necklace is gone. I, goddess of love and beauty, have been robbed. What happened? My horse and I heard noises coming from over here, and then I saw a fly come in your window. We think it might have been a god disguised as a fly. I was enjoying my beauty sleep, and when I woke up, I realized my necklace was missing. It has been taken. Heimdall and I think it was Loki who has stolen your necklace. Yes, it must be him. Oh, that dreadful Loki. I want my necklace back. Oh, please, Heimdall and Goldtop. Will you go after him and retrieve it? Of course! There he is! Do not move, thief! How did you find me? How do you know it was I who stole the necklace? I will not give up. It is too beautiful. You may be a trickster, but you can't fool me. I know that you disguised yourself as a fly and went into Freya's window. We knew it was you from miles away. Loki, I will kill you with my sword. To protect myself from you, I will turn into a blue flame. And I will turn myself into water to extinguish your flames. Well, now I am a polar bear and I shall drink your water. You will never get away with this. I will turn into a grizzly bear and defeat you once and for all. 
You are much too powerful from eating all the earth and sun. I must leave the necklace and run for my life. Thank you, Goldtop, for all that you've done. You've carried me place to place, and without you, I would have had been able to defeat Loki. Come on, we must go to Freya. Anything for you, Angel. Now we can return Freya's precious necklace. Oh, Freya, we have come and brought you a gift. A gift? What could it be? We have recovered your necklace. Oh, thank you. How did you get it back? I found Loki hiding, and when I went to attack him with my sword, he turned into a blue flame. And then Heimdall turned himself into water to extinguish his flames. Yes, and when he turned into a polar bear, I had to become a grizzly bear so that I could defeat him. He got scared and ran away. That sounds like a wild battle. Thank you, dear friends, for defeating Loki and returning my necklace. Happy to help! Anytime. The battle you had with Loki was a wild one, but it is nothing compared to what is to come. One day in many years, Heimdall, you will sound your horn for the last time. That will be the day you summon all the gods into battle against Loki and his army when he comes to destroy Asgard. That will be known forever as the Battle of Ragnarok. We will be ready, Freya. We will be ready. It is I, Set. I ripped up my brother Osiris into fourteen pieces to get the throne, become king of Egypt. And yet, it is still not mine because his son Horus is still alive. If I want to be king, I must kill Horus too. It's true. You have always been jealous of Osiris, and then you killed him to get your greedy hands on the throne. Now you are trying to kill my son, but I will never let you get your hands on him. Fear me! Once I kill your baby, then I'll get the throne and no one else will have it. I will not stop until it is done. We'll see about that set. You'll have to find us first. I'm not worried. I will be patient and wait until the time is right. Goodbye for now. I must disguise myself and hide, but I cannot go alone. Who will protect me? I'm here to protect you, me and these other scorpions. Seven scorpions to protect me? Who sent you? The cat sent us to make sure no harm comes to you or your son, Horus. Ah, Sir Ket, my good friend, goddess of animals, medicine, and magic. Thank goddess she sent you. Yes, we are important creatures to Sir Ket because her symbol is the scorpion. Yes, where should we go? To a town where no one will find you. Surely someone there will give you shelter, for you are the mighty Isis. They will not know it is me because I will be disguised. I am hiding from Set, remember? Huh, good point. You are not only beautiful, but perceptive as well. Let us go and prepare Isis with a great disguise. Look at my mansion, my jewels, all the food I have. I truly am a wealthy, wealthy person. I want for nothing. Look at that mansion. We should stay there. May I stay here and have some food? Stay where? Here. Here? Yes, here. You expect me to let you and your grimy pet scorpions stay in my beautiful mansion? I do not think so. How rude! All I wanted was a place to rest and some food to nourish us. What did she say, my queen? How do you not know what she said? You were here the whole time. Defense, I wasn't listening. Were you listening? I wasn't listening. I thought you were listening. Weren't you listening? No, we weren't listening. Well, she turned me away and said we were too dirty to stay in her beautiful mansion. Be forewarned, the wealthy woman and her family shall be cursed. Isis, let's try that small house over there. I'm the poorest person in town and I only have bits of rice. I may not have much, but I have blood in my heart and food for today. Find content. May I stay here and have some food? Here? Yes. Here. Of course you are welcome to stay, but I do not have much to give. My name is Hypatia, and my home is your home. My scorpions and I do not need much, just shelter and a small meal. Well, not too small. Then, hush! Look how dirty you are from your journey. You must be tired. And look at your beautiful baby. May I hold him? Aww. He's wet. Take him back, please. 
You are so kind to let us stay here. What can we ever do to repay you? You and your scorpions can sweep the floor. Thank you. The wealthy woman needs to be punished. She is not a nice person. Just because we don't look as necessary, she turned us away. Yes, this is infuriating. Maybe we should sting her boy and kill him. All mothers would hate to see their child hurt. Yes, and we should use all our venom combined. Yes, if we use all our venom combined, he will be dead. And if we use all our venom, only Isis herself can save him. It will be up to her. My son, somebody please help. He's laying on the ground. He is dead. What is that? Should I go outside and check? I'll come with you. Oh no, what happened? My child, my child, he is dead. I was sleeping, and when I woke up, he was on the floor. I think he has been bitten by a poisonous creature. I know what has happened. You know those scorpions I brought? Well, they stung your son. I wish to save your boy, but I am afraid my true identity will be known if I do. But I must. A boy's life is at stake. A boy just like my son. O oh, poison of Tefen, come out of him and fall upon the ground. O oh, poison of Befen, advance not, penetrate no farther. Come out of him and fall upon the ground. For I am Isis, the great enchantress and speaker of spells. Fall down, O oh, poison of Mesotet. Hasten not, poison of Mesototep. Rise not, poison of Batet and Tejet. Approach not, poison of Matet. As Isis spoke the spell, the scorpions joined in. O oh, poison of Tefen, come out of him and fall upon the ground. O oh, poison of Tefen, advance not, penetrate no further. Come out of him and fall upon the ground. Fall down, O oh, poison of Mesotet. Hasten not, poison of Mesotet. Rise not, poison of Tefen and Tejet. Approach not, poison of Matet. She is not a peasant woman. She is the goddess Isis. My son, he is alive again. Thank you, great goddess Isis. You have been so kind, even after I was not kind to you. Please take some of my riches for yourself. Thank you, but I cannot take this. Instead, I will give it to this poor woman who needs it more than I. You are giving that to me? What will I ever do with all these riches? I know, I will help others in the village. That is a great idea, Hypatia. I have helped this woman's son, and my own son is safe from set. Everything has worked out perfectly.